So our company will probably have a laboratory at, uh, on the moon. Oh, you know, it's only a three-day flight. It's, it's, it's not such a big deal. And they would maybe come back to Earth for a little vacation or whatever. <laughs> People get used to that. I am Franklin Chang Diaz. And I am Miranda Chang, and uh, he's my dad. So this is the vacuum chamber, and this is where Essentially what we do is create the vacuum of space in order to run the engine. Well, one of the simplest things about the rocket is that it has no moving parts, unlike other rockets that have lots of pumps and lots of things that are moving around. Vasimir doesn't have any of that. It's essentially a magnetic chamber. It is a magnetic pipe. We get a, a gas. We use argon normally, but we can use all sorts of different kinds of gases. And essentially what this structure does is it pulls together all the outside elements to create a plasma. These plasmas are like, you can think of them as like um, jello, you know, you can think of jello as very wiggly. And so if you stimulate the substances, a plasma, with the right kind of motion, plasma gets really hot. The number one rule of rockets is the hotter and the faster your exhaust is coming out, the better. That's the best kind of rocket. In essence, uh, we're trying to generate the power of the sun in a small container. I was born in Costa Rica, grew up in, in Costa Rica. You know, I was not like the top of my class. I was in the middle. I was just a regular kid. And I came to the United States at the beginning of the space age, uh, really with the goal and the, the aspiration of becoming an astronaut someday. We've got Vision Specialist Franklin Chang Diaz, less than two minutes away now from launch, all systems are go. But having flown seven times uh, was definitely um, more than I could have ever imagined. For the span of um, essentially 25 years of a career at NASA, I was able to see changes in the planet from mission to mission with my own eyes. Any other species that survived this long learned to live in different environments. And that's just what we have to do. And so that's really why these technologies that we're doing and other, uh, other companies are doing is it's to help, it's really doing our homework and, and learning how we can travel in space. But a lot of things that need to be done in space just in the close proximity is, is cleaning up space. Uh, amazingly enough, we humans managed to trash the place. And these things are, they're, you know, they're going around the Earth very fast, and if they hit each other, well, it breaks into a bunch of other little pieces. I mean, you're getting strapped to an yeah. explosive device going into space, and your biggest threat was being hit by space debris. It, nobody really wants to, to deal with it right now, because with our current technology and current mode of transportation, it would be very hard to go pick up all these pieces in a chemical rocket. Because it's kind of, you know, once you turn it on, you get as much as the explosion is going to give you, and then that's it, and it's in a matter of minutes. And we, uh, we sol solve that problem in some ways. I kind of dream that the Earth will, will remain a very pristine, beautiful place, and that that's the way we want it to stay. And that's why we do need to find our way to other worlds, and that future generations will be able to come back to see where we all came from. And the Earth would then become humanity's national park, essentially a, a protected area of humanity that allows the future generations to find uh, their way back and see where they all came from.